So welcome to the third part of today's lecture. So we, we just seen the basis theorem and there's a bunch of other nice results you can derive about the dimension and spanning sets and linear independence. And I just wanna kind of capture a bunch of these results with the following facts. So the first fact is saying that if you have a collection of vectors that's linearly independent and you take the span of those vectors, so that gives you a subspace, the dimension of that subspace is simply the P, the number of vectors. Uh, if you know that your vectors are linearly independent in V, then it can be extended to a basis for V. So you, these P vectors may not be, the span of these vectors may not fill up all of V, but what you can do is you can keep adding a linear independent element um, one at a time until you start filling up the whole space. So this theorem is kind of useful because it allows you to take uh, any set of vectors that are linear independent and keep adding new vectors until you fill up the whole space. And the third one is it's somewhat uh, obvious is that if you have a subspace of a bigger space, then the dim dimension of the subspace should be smaller than the dimension of the space it's contained in. So subspaces are, we would think of as smaller and that information is captured in the dimension. And the following kind of examples hopefully will help uh, clarify some of these things. Uh, the first thing I thought I would do is like think about R3 and you can classify now dimensions by uh, subspaces by dimension. So for example, the zero dimensional subspace, well, there's only one, right? Only one, and that one is the origin. That's the only zero dimensional subspace in R3. A one dimensional subspace, well, there's an infinite number of these, and these would be any line through the origin. Uh, two dimensional spaces, well, there's also going to be an infinite number of these, and there, this would be any plane through the origin. So that gives me another infinite family of two dimensional subspaces. And then what are the three dimensional subspaces? Well, there's only one, and namely the whole space itself. And you can't have a four dimensional subspace because you would be breaking this fact right here because we're sitting inside of R3, our V is R3. So this number here is three. So all subspaces have to be three or smaller. So let's kind of just do some examples involving dimension. Hopefully this will help. Okay, so here I, I'm asking, well, find the dimension of the subspace in R2 spanned by these three vectors, okay? I.e., here is H, H is the span of these vectors, okay? So the first thing you have to be very clear of is, is the answer is not three. Okay, now there's a couple of ways to see why it's not three. Well, the one reason to see that it's not three is because it's sitting inside of an R, R2, which is two dimensional. So the dimension has to be um, uh, zero, one, or two, right? So actually, let me rephrase that. So we have H is inside of R2. So the dimension of H has to be zero, one, or two, okay? And I, I wanna kind of point out is like, you can't use this fact right here because you don't know if those vectors that I gave you are linearly independent. And in fact, they're not. We know that these vectors can't be linearly independent because the very first theorem here says that if you have a two dimensional vector space, and if we have three vectors in, which is bigger than two vectors, then the set of vectors has to be linearly dependent. So we have to decide, is the dimension zero, one, or two? Well, it's probably not zero because it's, it's, not, uh, the sing it's not just the origin. So we know it can't be zero. So we have to decide between one or two. And I picked an example where it's very easy to notice something here that, um, second vector minus two, four is just negative two times the first vector. And the last vector is equal to three times the first vector. 
right? So, I mean, these are very simple linear combinations. And remember, we proved a theorem that says if a vector is a linear combination of one of the other ones, you could just pop it out and whatever is left over still spans the same set. So, H is actually equal to the span of just the single vector, one, negative two. And this implies, because one vector by itself in, uh, is linearly independent, this implies that this is a basis for H. So this implies that the dimension of H is one. Okay, so let me just maybe add that out of the comment. Need to remove linear dependent vectors. Okay, so I'm just going to take a pause here and then we'll continue to do some more examples involving dimensions.